welcome to lesson 7 of my visual c -sharp language series. In this video I discuss while and for statements. Okay, so let's get started by creating a new project, Windows Forms application. And we are going to call this Lesson 07. Okay. Then we're going to open up our toolbox and we're going to drag open a button. And then we're going to double click on the button to get our click event handler. And then we're going to go ahead and create a new function. This uh, isn't necessary uh, for this tutorial, but since we haven't uh, really done that many uh, functions lately, ever since I made the tutorial demonstrating how to create them, um, I thought it was a good idea to create one for memory sake so that we remember functions because when you create your own applications this is uh, pretty important. So as you see here um, I don't have any parameters or return values in this function and we're just going to use this to demonstrate um, our tutorial. So as I said in the introduction um, this is lesson 7 and we're going to be covering um, while and for statements and they're in a category called loops, which are basically a statements of code that execute over and over again until a certain requirement is met, which is tested using a, compar a comparison statement with a variable. So the um, best way to demonstrate this is uh, practical. So let's go ahead and declare a variable. We're going to call this int test. And we're going to set the value equal to 1. And then here's the syntax for the while loop. It's very similar to an if statement. We're going to go while test is less than, I mean, yeah, is less than one. Now, actually, no, that's not going to work. It's less than 20. I'm sorry, guys. Um, then we're going to have our opening and closing braces. And then we're going to put a message box dot show. And we are going to uh, display the value of test and we have to convert it to a string and then we're going to say test incremented or plus plus and let's see here there's nothing really new this is the first time we actually used the less than statement not the uh, equal statement here so while test is less than 20 we will display a message box and we will increment the value which basically means that you add one to the variable that's what the increment represents um, there, there are other there's also a decrementing variable which I believe is test minus minus there's some other um, incrementing and decrementing um, notations but I, I don't know every single one of them okay so let's go ahead and compile this actually if I was to follow this, uh, it'd take a ton of message boxes to show, so we're going to actually change this to 5. Uh, we'll make this a little bit easier. We have to fill a button. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, oh no 5. Sorry, guys. Okay. So, that's it. If, yeah, if we did less than or equal to, I believe, it would show 5. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there we go. And you may be wondering how this is useful, but well, it's extremely useful. I, I use it all the time when I'm coding. And when, when you uh, start coding and you realize that the if statements won't work and all this stuff, then you, you will be using a while. It's, it's a staple to the language, and you'll need to do it to program a ton of applications. Okay. Now we're going to be uh, taking a look at the for loop. Now, the for loop and the while loop uh, do almost exactly the same thing. And their syntax is just a little different. And it, depending on your uh, personality or your personal preferences, you choose between the while and the for loop. The while loop was generally uh, aimed toward the Java basic and C sharp yeah pro programmers well for loop was mainly uh, 
used in, with the C++ programmers. Those are the guys that use them the most. And I personally do not like the for statement. I never use it <laughs> at all. Uh, I just use the while loop because I think it's a lot uh, easier. But uh, because a lot of people do like the for loop, I'm going to demonstrate that as well. So uh, let's go ahead here, uh, tab up, and we're going to get rid of this. Let's see, we'll, com we'll just comment that out. And we're going to uh, type this in. Hopefully I get this correct. It's been a long time since I've done force. Uh, for int, let's see here. I, uh, yeah, I, I is the typical one that's used. Equals one, and then we have our comma. I is less than 10, and we're going to increment I. Now here we're going to do our message box dot show. Um, whoops, that's I dot to string. Okay, let's make this less than equal to. Okay, that's better. Okay. So let's see here. Whoops. Uh, no wonder I'm getting all these errors. It's a semicolon. Okay. Okay, there we go. Uh, that should do it. So let's go ahead and uh, compile this and then I'll break it down and show it to you. Button 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So this is a little different than a, than a, a for loop because you have your incrementing value in the statement itself. And all the testing statements are here and in here it's just the code that needs to be executed and a lot of people think this is more organized that you have the incrementing value up here so that all your testing is all up here you don't have to worry about anything right here I personally don't like it I like having my incrementing or changing value down here it may, makes me a little more flexible I, I th just make a, the code flow just makes a little more sense but then again it's your choice so we have and we have our variable declaration in the for statement that's a slightly little bit different I don't think you can declare variables in the while loop you may have to check me on that I'm not sure of course we have our i is less than or equal to 10 and then our i is incremented whoops I am sorry guys what the heck am I doing Okay. Okay. Alright, so uh, that was it on this tutorial. This was actually probably the shortest one of my tutorials where I show you uh, how to do a while in for loops. I mean, I prefer the while loops. The for loops are pretty good. It's, it's your own uh, personal opinion on what to use them. And in the next tutorial, we are going to be uh, covering uh, what are called exception handling. And that's um, really useful because what happens when um, I or whatever cannot be converted to a string? Or if you try to squeeze a double into an int or uh, try and turn a string into a number, and that, that's really important. So. Stay tuned for the next tutorial and for more tutorials, please go to thehackersjournal.com.